this is John Conley. In this video, we're gonna go over the Pro Tools Edit and Mix windows. Pro Tools has two main windows, the Edit window and the Mix window. You can think of the Edit window as your tape deck. Tape deck. That's where you're gonna record, edit, audio, uh, MIDI files you'll see there, also video track if you have it in your session. The mix window is just that, it looks like a mixer. I'm gonna flip over there. In this session that I've created, I have four audio tracks. You see them in the mix window right there, and there they are, the same four audio tracks in the edit window. I'm using a shortcut that I use a thousand times in a day. It's uh, to toggle me back and forth between those two windows. You can see it under the window menu, mix and edit. It's command equal, on a Mac or control equals on a PC. And like I said, I use that quite often to go back and forth. The majority of your time is gonna be spent in the edit window, so we're gonna do a little overview here. The far left side of the edit window is the tracks list. Any tracks that you create in this session, audio tracks, MIDI tracks, instrument tracks, master faders are all going to appear in that list. So this is a really quick and easy way to see what tracks you have and what, you know, how you want to get to the next track, right? So the highlighted one is the selected track. So if I click on a track name, it's selected here and it's also shown that it's selected here. This little dot to the left of each of the tracks in the tracks list is the show or hide button and I use this quite often as well. This will allow me to hide tracks temporarily or one or more tracks so that I can focus or zoom in on one track and get rid of the other ones. Hidden tracks are still gonna be fully functional. They play back, nothing changes. It's just that they're uh, visually removed from the screen so you can focus on other things. So I'm gonna click and drag across those buttons to bring my tracks back. On the far right side of the edit window, I have the clips list. Anything that you have in the session in terms of audio clips, video clips, uh, MIDI clips are going to appear in that list. I'm gonna create a little 1K tone. Shift, Control, Option, Three on a Mac and a PC. I think it's Shift, Control, Alt, Three. Uh, and there I have an, a 1K audio tone, and that audio clip appears in my clip list. So this list of audio clips, of course, is going to grow, and as you edit it, I'll trim this back just a bit. Now I have the original clip and then a subset of that clip, and they both appear in this list. I can drag and drop items from that list onto tracks if I want to. So if you want to import audio, you can just drag and drop audios directly, uh, audio files directly into the timeline or into the clip list. Maybe you're not sure where you want them to land on the timeline yet. You can dump them into the clip list over there and drag them in later. All right, the middle of the screen is pretty self-explanatory. That's the Pro Tools timeline. At the top of the timeline, I have a few different rulers I can use to kind of navigate that. I'm using bars and beats. That's typically what you might use as your main ruler and therefore your main counter up at the top of the screen. Um, let me go back to this view, hide sub counter. There's my main counter and that's in bars and beats right now. I can change that to minutes and seconds by clicking over here or clicking this little menu here so I can look at time code or feet and frames or bars and beats, whatever. I want. I can show or hide more of these rulers by clicking on this little ruler menu here. I can add time code. I can also add some, some different musical functions, tempo, meter, key signature, chords. All of those rulers can be uh, visible if you'd like. I tend to hide them because I want to, um, you know, optimize my screen real estate a little bit. So anything that I don't need up there, I'll option click on a Mac or alt click on a PC to hide them. So those are the rulers, right? All right, on the tracks, I have not only the track name, but the record, input, solo, and mute buttons, but I also have the inserts and I.O. view. Now, these views are totally optional based on what you might be doing in Pro Tools at any given time, but you can show or hide these views, inserts and I.O., by clicking on this little white rectangle there. I can uncheck inserts. I tend to do that, but I tend to use the I.O. view. So that I can see what input that track is set to and also the output, but more importantly, I can just grab the volume and I can change the volume of, the, of that track without having to go over the, to the mix window if I don't want to. And same thing applies for pan. I can pan this track left or right, right from in the edit window. Of course, I could also do that in the mix window if I command equals over there. There's my volume for track number one and there's pan. And here's that same section IO that we were looking 
looking at in the edit window. It's visible over here in the mix window as well. And there's my input and output. All right, back over to the edit window. The upper left corner are the modes. Shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. We're going to cover the modes in another video. So be sure to check that out. This next section is the tools. And we'll go into greater detail on that as well. The smart tool video, be sure to check that out. The main counter, this is your grid and nudge section in the middle. And I have my preference is to show the transport at the top of the edit window as well as the MIDI controls. You may not see that in your current Pro Tools uh, session and the way you get that is to go to the upper right corner to the edit window view selector and you can pick and choose what items you want to show up at the top. I tend to have everything up there. I like to have the transport as well as the expanded transport so that I can see pre-roll, I can see all the you know play, stop, fast forward, record buttons, all that good stuff, and of course my MIDI controls so that I can see what the tempo is and easily turn the metronome on or off from there. And then of course over here next to that section is the output meters. I, I like to have that up too so I can see what my, my stereo output is uh, meter wise. All right, oh, one last section down at the bottom, lower left corner is the group, so if, uh, track group. So if I wanna group a couple of tracks together, let's group all of these. I'm gonna click on audio one, shift click on audio four, same shortcut on a PC, and I'll go to track group, and I'm gonna turn this into a group. I'm keep group one, that's fine. All right, so now if I make a selection on this one track, that selection will, apply to all the tracks. So this might be handy if you're editing across a bunch of drum tracks or maybe vocal tracks. You want to apply and edit to across to multiple tracks at once. Or if I go over to the mix window, since it's an edit and a mix group, if I change the volume, they all change together. If I hold control temporarily to clutch out, I can adjust their relative volumes and then let go of control and I have all of the tracks in that group maintaining their their relative volumes this is a very powerful mixing tool all right so that's the edit window very briefly i'm going to go over to the mix window at the very bottom of the track is the comments field i can type in uh sm58 as the mic i used or whatever it could be um the amp that you used or the, uh, the, the player, the musician that did the track. Above this is my delay compensation view, which I don't have on right now. I'm going to go to options menu and turn that on. And of course the track name. To change a track name, just double click and uh, type in the new name, John Vocal 1. Above that, of course, is the fader in the meters. I want to disable this group. I'm going to click on that group over here in the group section to disable it. Now I have individual control of that track volume. Above that is my solo button, mute button, input enable button, record button, pan left and right. These are mono tracks so we have a single panner. If I create a stereo audio track we'll have two panners, one for each side left and a right panner. All right, here's my automation modes. Off, read, touch, latch, touch, latch, right. I'm using Pro Tools Ultimate, so I have all of the automation functionality. IO stands for ins and outs, allows me to select the input for this particular track or the output. Mix, in this case, is my main output to my stereo speakers. Above that is sends, A through E. We're going to cover sends in great detail, as well as inserts. Now, I currently only have five of each visible. There are ten available on each track. And I can get to that in a couple of ways. If I right-click on any of these titles, inserts, sends, or I.O., I'll get the menu of other items that I can include in this mix window view. All right? There we go. There's inserts A through E, F through J, sends A through E, sends F through J. I don't often use more than five on each. Occasionally I will. So what I'll do is I'll option click on FJ to hide those and inserts so that I have just five of each visible. So uh, there's a oh, tracks list over here on the mix window. Same thing as the tracks list in the edit window. I can show or hide tracks from here uh, or any one or more that I want. And uh, that's it. There's the Pro Tools Edit and Mix Window Overview.